Are you feeling overwhelmed and it's just a little bit too much to bear? Well, today I'm going to talk about some ways that I've worked through this. And if you stay until the end, I have an extra point for you then as well. Now, before we get started today, I just want to mention that if you want to stay on top of your self-esteem and confidence, have a weekly tip and be up to date with all the latest episodes, all you got to do is click in the show notes below to sign up to our free weekly newsletter. Overwhelm, overwhelm, overwhelm. It's some, it's a comment I hear from quite a few people. It's like, I'm really overwhelmed. And I've said it myself, right? Now, I've hugely experienced this in my life, like particularly in like jobs and even that a little bit today, admittedly. And I was able to pull myself back. In jobs, I found it was a lot of the time because people would bombard me with information. And if I'm not interested in something, I will really find it hard to pay attention. I know I'm not alone in this, yet that's just the truth, right? I mean, I don't have, like, an attention deficit disorder or anything like that. Uh, yet, I do think a lot of us have problems with attention. And for me, if I'm not interested in something, I won't pay attention very well. And that can lead to overwhelm because then I'll come away from something like, I just don't understand. And particularly in my early and mid twenties, I wouldn't have the confidence to tell someone. And sometimes in the in the workplace, you just have to go with things uh, when you're in a job, and that's you know unfor- the unfortunate things about job. You can't be your true self sometimes and say what you really think. Whilst things in my business, like I can do a lot more freely. Um, even like running a sales team for something I love, I can speak a lot more freely. And When I can't challenge people, I can't ask as questions I want, then it can become a little bit overwhelming. Now, in the last couple of years, I've experienced it like just by just by a lot of things happening and then me being perhaps not looking after my body as as well as I could at times. And therefore, that can cause a lot of brain fog, fog that then therefore causes a lot more overwhelm. Right. So I've certainly been there. Now, what I've personally put it down to in my life, and I want to share this with you, is there's too much information out there. There's way too much information. I personally only listen to information that I've invested in, right? I I don't tend to, I know this is a free podcast, I don't tend to listen to free things. I don't, but I create a podcast and I'm so glad you're here. I don't tend to listen to many. I only listen to the things I've invested in and again and again and again and apply them rather than trying to find so much information. Now I read books, which obviously aren't a massive cost and I'll, I'll tend to read a book a week. I'm a little bit behind this week, uh, but I'll get there even though it's just coming up to Friday and yeah, there's, there's so much info. So I tend to, I found what's worked for me is sticking to the stuff that I've invested in and uh, reading a book a week and not trying to just keep searching for more information because information leads to overwhelm, which leads to inaction. And when we don't take action, we don't get results and we don't feel so good about life, right? So that's what I've already put it down to. So I want to give some steps on how I've worked through this and be able to connect myself and not feel so overwhelmed. Just for that, I want to mention or ask you this. How does it help you when you, you're you constantly just trying to look for information, you're distracting yourself left, right, and center? If you're anything like me, it's exhausting and it's really hard work. So I can totally relate to you if you're in that situation. So this is what I found really effective for working through overwhelm, to feel a bit calmer, bit, have a bit more clarity and moving forward. The first thing, schedule time for silence. Silence every single day, right? Um this morning, for example, I was, I mix up a bit, but this morning what I was doing was uh, I went to the, I was going to say the woods. What do you call it? I don't know what, I was trying to find the woods. The, not the jungle. I don't live near a jungle. I've been to the Amazon jungle, which is amazing. Uh, but I don't, I live in Bristol in the UK. Anyway, I went to the woods. Maybe it's called the woods. Yeah, let's call it the woods. Anyway, I was just walking around there. I didn't actually go into the woods. I was on like the outskirts. And I was walking on the grass and I had my phone in my pocket, but I wasn't using it. And I was just in silence. And that allows me to reconnect to myself and my intuition and what's really going on inside of me. Because 
otherwise I find that I'm just like getting distracted left, right and center. So finding time for silence, because you know the way forward if you really listen to yourself. So scheduling time for silence has been a game changer for me to work for overwhelm. And then I'll journal, write down anything that comes up. The second thing, mentors or coaches. So good, right? And I was being interviewed earlier and someone said, and I said, and he asked me, he, he asked some great questions, uh, Steve, the, the guy who interviewed me. And he said, what do you think stops people from getting coaches and mentors? And I said, a few of the blocks, I think it's the fact that we think we can do it ourselves. Well, if you, well, yes, I think we've all got it inside of us. But if you were really, you could have done it already, else you wouldn't need to look for a coach. The role of a coach or mentor is to guide you further, faster, right? They can pull stuff out of you that you can't even see, right? They can help you pull your own greatness out of yourself, right? And then the other thing that puts people off is investing into one. Now, people spend money on stupid stuff all the time, in my opinion. It's like we'll pay hundreds for a night out, a weekend away. And I'm not saying you shouldn't treat yourself from time to time. Yet you're like, oh, I can't invest in myself. It's like, look at actually where you're spending your money, right? For example, like recently, I just invested into a practitioner training in breathwork, right? And it's like, could I have used that money to go on holiday? Yeah. Is that going to give me a return for helping people change their lives and helping my business? No, right? So I can wait to do the holiday because I'll be making an impact and therefore making a profit on that and do a holiday later. People don't think about these things. So always get financially creative and actually become aware of your own habits before you start claiming you can't get a coach or mentor. There's always a way for the committed, right? There's always excuses for those who can't. And then the third thing, weekly targets and one thing. So we've talked about the site, power of silence and getting a coach or mentor and someone to guide you. Weekly, having a weekly target and one thing. All right, this is something I have to call myself out for now and then. And it, it's, it kind of really helped me. And I'm going to give you a recommendation for how you can take this further and really help you. Just focus on one thing for each area that you got to do each week and or each day, right? So maybe it's your health. What's one thing you're going to focus on? Well, I need to uh, get up at this time. I need to go to bed at this time. I need to drink this amount of water. I need to take these supplements. Okay, maybe just focus on 30 minutes of exercise. And what I found when I focused on like, I'm going to do exercise then is or maybe a gym class. I'm like, I've got to eat well that day because I need the energy for it, right? And it naturally happens. So start focusing on one thing you can do for each area. That will really help you with overwhelm. Now, I've got an extra thing I want to share with you as well. Uh, and it's a very short one. But just before I get onto that, I want to mention that if you want to keep up to date of all these episodes, never miss any and get a weekly confidence tip, all you got to do is subscribe to our free weekly newsletter for absolutely free. You can unsubscribe at any time. But you can find that in the show notes link below. Okay, my extra point I would just share with you is a book recommendation. I'm going to make it very simple. It's a book called The One Thing by Gary Keller. It's really good at allowing you to kind of hone in on your focus so you don't get so overwhelmed. It's talking a, a little bit about what I talked on the last point of just focusing on one thing. Well, it does. That's what it's talking about. It goes into more uh, explanation and some very simple strategies for how you can run your life. Definitely check out that book because it's really good for allowing you to focus what you need to and not so much overwhelm. So that's what I got for you today. I appreciate you for being here. You're improving other people's lives by being the best you. And remember, you are in control of your own self-esteem and confidence.